Uh, Doug McIntyre, I'm the editor in chief at 24 seven wall street and our, our top editor and writer on things that have to do with stocks, the economy markets, Lee Jackson, who's probably been with us since almost the day we started the company. Today, we're going to talk about the two most valuable companies in the world, Microsoft and Apple. Both at one point had a trillion dollar, three trillion dollar market cap. And it used to be Apple sort of was on top. Suddenly, Microsoft has pulled ahead. So what's happened there? Why has Microsoft surged and Apple sort of actually drifted off some? I think when Ballmer left and Nadella took over, there was a big effort to push ahead into new fields and just not working on software for computers and things of that nature. And I think he took huge steps in boosting Azure and their cloud business, which is neck and neck with, with Amazon's. I know Amazon AWS probably still dominates it, but Azure, he was very competitive on pricing. And then of course their foray into the I, <laughs> the AI world uh, is something that helped just throw the pedal down over the last year. And, and it seems like their efforts and products that they've brought versus what uh, the top person Tim Cook has brought at Apple have been profoundly different, and and especially from an income standpoint. It's interesting. In the last day or two, you're starting to see these AI-related stocks announce. AMD, which is big in that you know, chip end of that business, disappointed some. Microsoft had very good earnings, but people said, you know, AI wasn't exploding the way it should have is is ai a little bit overhyped when it comes to stocks like microsoft and even amd are we ahead of ourselves probably so and you know you've been in this business a long time like i have and it's always you buy the rumor and you sell the news and although like you said doug the the reports from all of the companies google as well were solid but the forward guidance just wasn't that, boy, AI is going to knock it out of the ballpark for us this year. If you look at these two companies and go back a ways, uh, under Steve Ballmer, who was the CEO for a long time, he thought that there was a good hardware business to be had, just you know, gaming, consoles. He thought they could dominate the smartphone uh, market mostly with software, but there was always this idea that Microsoft would be able to build and sell devices under its brand. Didn't work out. Apple, on the other hand, Steve Jobs invented what may be the most popular piece of consumer electronics maybe in the world right now with the iPhone. And it's had a, several generations where sales go up and up and up. It seems that Microsoft's decision to go software and Apple's decision to go hardware isn't working out now. Yeah, and I, I would put forth that Xbox for, for Microsoft has, has been a huge hit. I'm no gaming expert by any means, but I know my son has one. And so, and I know there's always a battle for that hardware side, but you know, the, those kind of gaming systems are also, you know, internet ready and and you can do all sorts of stuff on it but i think yeah in, in the big picture i think you're exactly right and the, the devices that apple i mean the, the ipod and the iphone were broke everything down i mean the smartphone the advent of the smartphone and the ipod did that but since then what have they put out well apple watches apple tv i mean nothing that's that's not being done by other people I think that people are worried right now. Apple's had, I think, four quarters in a row where revenue was down slightly. Earnings were good. Yeah. You know, it's it's not like there's anything wrong. But the question is, how much is right? Uh, the iPhone itself is getting, you know, we're 15 generations into this now. And why do people buy the next generation if 
the camera is a little better, the process a little better, but it's still a thousand dollar, you know, brick. Do you think you're getting to the point where people are saying, I, I just, I don't need that very moderate improvement. I'll just keep what I've got. I think you could be right. And, and they've said that they're worried about the iPhone 16 because iPhone 15 results were kind of tepid and it's expensive, like you said, and it's become where it's, and, and again, that's often why the competition fares very well because they're not as expensive and it's almost like it's become a status symbol, you know, at some extent. Yeah. And I, I think, I think you'll hit a wall with that where I guess there's always the people that will buy it, but that probably, unless, like you said, unless there was some drastic change or some incredible improvement, I think they could hit a wall for sure. If you look at China for a second, China is the world's um, largest smartphone market by a huge margin. It's over 900 million people there have a smartphone. It seems to me that Apple has a problem there that it doesn't have any place else in the world. And that is there are two or three native companies that make very high quality smartphones. And Apple is up against companies that are based in China. Should people be worried about the fact that you've got a hyper competitive market there and the iPhone is really slugging it out for market share? Yeah, I think they should be. It's the same reason the EV car makers are worried there, you know, because the products there are good. You know, Buffett owns a huge chunk of an EV car maker in China. And I think you're right. I think, and I think to some degree, and I don't know lots of folks that live in China, but I'm sure that uh, they're encouraged to buy the local product or one would think they would be. Something that could happen in the future and this is going to be a political issue to some extent, is that those Chinese uh, smartphone markers, they want to get into Europe. They want to get into the U.S. They want to get into India. India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Huge. Second, I mean, almost as big as China in terms of number of people. If those political barriers, particularly in the United States and Europe, start to drop, how much a, of a threat is it that the Chinese companies come into those markets with a quality product at a lower price? Probably a very good threat. I mean, you can't buy almost anything that's produced on a large level in the United States with it's not coming from China. We had, you know, my wife just recently bought us new lawn chase lounges. Of course, they were on Wayfair, but where did they come from? China, because we couldn't we couldn't source anything else. And I think when they aggressively go into, especially when you mentioned India, and where there's a huge population, I th I think they could take some significant share away and apple would be the one to probably uh, samsung of course is, is is in there as well but i mean apple probably would suffer the most because they're the priciest yeah if you move back over to microsoft obviously their relationship with open ai and the fact that they've stated that they're going to have some ai application in virtually everything that they make available, e even on, you know, Bing, yeah, MSN, everything. Even, even these things that are not for them, the main event, but when you move to all the windows based products, that there'll be a component. It, it seems to me the thing that you should worry about is, is that that's the kind of thing the government is interested in. You, you know, the, the government is not all that interested in windows. Uh, they mm -hmm. used to be from a anti-competitive standpoint, yeah. but you could end up with a, a very significant regulatory uh, aspect of the entire AI universe. Yeah. And I, th I think that's where, you know, it was, it came out of the shoot pretty hard about a year ago, but you know, they probably they started tapping the brakes. The politicians started tapping the brakes pretty fast because they don't really want this. They don't want it to get away from them. And you know, we've already seen some applications where you know, like the, the, the photos of Taylor Swift and all that was all done with AI and, and they just don't want it to get away from them because it's, you know how it is, Doug, you, you open up that box and you let the genie out and you're not putting it back in anytime soon. Yeah, it's very true. Well, look, we've got uh, both these companies earnings now, uh, 
we're going to, this is going to go on for a while because it's going to occur to Apple that they like what, you know, Microsoft has, and it's all, always true the same way. So we'll keep an eye on this. And Lee and I will be back. These are the two titans. These are the $3 trillion market cap companies. And the interest in them is going to stay huge as long as they're around. So I want to thank you and we'll catch up on it again soon. Thanks, Doug. I enjoyed it.